All righty. We're going to take Omar in California, who's wondering what atheism and science have to say about each other. How are you doing, Omar? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? Well, it's a Sunday. We're here on the show, and we're hoping someone can prove God to us. But do you want to talk about what atheism and science have to say about each other? So is that, the, is that correct? Uh, yeah, somewhat. Somewhat. I, I guess I want to take you through my kind of reasoning and rationality, and I'm just curious to maybe what your guys' opinion is on that. Okay. Oh, so I just have a your reason and rationality that they say what about each other, or just like what your thoughts on the topic are. Because our, okay, our notes well, don't have so, the, the conclusion of what you believe. I didn't know if you were leaning on that. I'm sorry. I, I didn't understand that. What's that? Oh, um, if never you mind. Tell us that, what you believe. Then yeah, why. Just, go, just go ahead and, yeah. and, and tell us what you think. Okay, yeah. So, you know, I, I know that, that, you know, there seems to be this kind of um, <clears throat> thing between science and God and, you know, something about, this idea that science points us away from God, but you know, I don't, <clears throat> I don't know how much true. At least the way I see things, it's not necessarily like that. See, the way I understand things is um, kind of based on the conservation of energy regarding you know energy being created and destroyed. Um, if we accept this scientific law as a fact, doesn't this basically tell us that nature cannot create itself? Because nope. if this is a law of nature, no, this is a law of nature. So you're, you're, you're missing nature. a you're missing an incredibly important point on Newton's second law. And do you know what that is? Can you cite Newton's second law, which is kind of what you're alluding to here? Mm-hmm. For the folks uh, at no, home, what is, you know, yeah. Because the, the important point that you're missing is in an isolated uh, system, right? Um, oh. energy, yeah, mm-hmm. energy will, will turn to chaos uh, in, in an isolated system. The problem is that the universe may be an isolated system, and we do see evidence of that. But Earth, yeah. this planet, and every every other planet is not an isolated system. We're getting energy from the sun. We radiate energy out, right? And so yeah. we're not locally on this planet. Uh, we're, not, we're not isolated. So we're getting energy in and out. So that's that's the problem. And, and when you're looking at a scientific law, keep in mind that uh, scientists yeah. are incredibly parsimonious with their words um, and usually yeah. very, very sharp, especially when they're detailing uh, theory and laws and things like that. So you can't yeah. just forget in an isolated system and, and think it works because it doesn't. Um, it's a really, really important well, point. Additionally, I'd say when you're talking yeah. about mm-hmm. the um, origins of our cosmos going back to the big bang uh the law of thermodynamics isn't an attempt by physicists to explain what the nature of existence whatever that word would mean at a time before the the big bang whatever before would mean before the creation of time or existence would mean before matter there's a reason why scientists are very parsimonious with their language um but yeah so that describes our universe as it is now but the point before that we haven't tried, or I certainly haven't tried to describe in scientific terms, and neither have cosmologists. Sure. So, I mean, you know, give, I would say, you know, given all of mankind's observations of the universe around them, it would fall in line with this idea of the conservation of energy, would it not? Um, I, I know you maybe mentioned it in the context of a uh, thermodynamic law, but, you know, I don't necessarily want to stick to that just for the reason of, um, you know, I don't know what other potential, you could say, baggage comes with that. You know, um, I'm kind of basing it mo- more on, like, how I see things, you know. Right. Like, you there's know, how you see things, and then there's there, then there's what science can actually explain and demonstrate, right? Mm-hmm. So, well, you mentioned science mentioning a closed system, and now... I'm Isolated, not closed, but yeah. Or isolated system, mm-hmm. sorry. I'm using the word universe in a somewhat generic sense. You know, I'm using it in an all-encompassing type of manner. That's to say, you know, the universe is just like all, you could say, energy. Yeah, and, and I, I understand I, it within time and space. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and if you're listening, I actually admitted that the universe may, in fact, be doing that. And we see evidence for that at the universal scale. 
the problem is that sure. we live on this planet and this planet is not an isolated system. We get energy in from the sun, we radiate energy out, right? And the other planets do the same thing. We get energy, not nearly as abundant as, as other planets, but as we do from the sun, but we also get energy. So we're not an isolated system. And that's really an important point to understand. And that's why we have life and other things coming into existence here is because energy is coming in to the system called planet Earth. Mm -hmm. So so everything you mentioned, would that not be part of the system called the universe? It, yeah. Well, so again, but so, so you're, you're kind of missing the point. There's the universe, which we talked about, mm -hmm. but within the universe are isolated little pieces, right? Nothing happens at the same time all around everywhere, right? It, uh, if you were to uh, heat up water, you know, water doesn't heat necessarily always heat up or cool mm -hmm. down. Uh, exactly the same way on, on the smaller scale. And that's what we have with the universe, right? It, uh, and at one point it did, and then it started to cool down enough that we were actually able to get start getting matter and uh, things like that. But within each individual element and in different parts of the universe, you get different amounts of energy because nothing is, is perfectly equal across all, everything. And we see that in cosmic microwave background radiation and a number of other places as well. But just because it happens at a universal scale doesn't mean that individual elements within that universe are all uh, heating up, cooling down at the same same rate, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So my question okay, is, well, what, what you know, can your, your uh, observations about matter tell us about um, science and uh, atheism? Because the notes we have are what science and atheism say about each other. And so far we've talked about thermodynamics and, and closed and open systems, but I'm wondering how that relates to the religious or non-religious element here. Um, well, you know, I wouldn't necessarily bring up religion and non-religion because that starts bringing in lots of beliefs, whereas okay. at least in my uh, worldview, Atheism and atheism is, is very different, at least the way I understand things. It doesn't seem to require beliefs, um, whereas religion does. So I kind of oh yeah rather no, make that distinction. Yeah. They're, they're different. I mean, basically what I'm getting to, I, I'm trying not to say, oh, okay, so what's your point? Because that sounds dismissive, but I was going to say, oh, okay, what's the next point in your point? Well, yeah. So, what's well, your point? The next point I was going to make... Um, kind of based on the law and conservation of energy, the point I would make off that is th this law essentially tells us that nature cannot create itself. It's not possible to so, be both self-creating and follow the law of conservation of energy. Right. And when you say nature in that sentence, are you referring to our observable cosmos or the universe? Uh, I'm referring to that yes um so this is a little bit uh, I, I think that this argument is a little bit analogous to evolution can't explain abiogenesis yes because it doesn't try to so the second law of thermodynamics describes things that happen in the universe now that it exists and what we observe and what we observe and our you know various observations and the theories of relativity is that in the universe matter isn't created or destroyed there's matter and energy have this relationship and all of this but that doesn't tell us about the creation of the universe or at least i've never heard anyone claim that it does well, well i would say the one thing it does tell us about creation is that nature cannot create itself no, so outside it, of that it doesn't yeah, say so you, anything yeah, about the beginning the, the, of nature it just says it's it's a bit like saying if i only see a plant grow when sunlight strikes it then it couldn't have come from a seed well the part where it's a seed the part before the observable universe we can't observe so we don't know right. and this only sounds I, I think part of the problem here is that you don't understand what the laws of thermodynamics are the first mm -hmm. second and third law and how they apply Right, because they don't say anything different? about they don't say anything of the kind about mm -hmm. the creation of the universe. They only talk about energy, and therefore matter. Yeah. But if you again, yeah. you have to go back and read them, and you have to read every word, and you have to understand what that means. The universe can be isolated, yes, but within the universe there are systems that don't that are following the, the laws of thermodynamics at different rates in different ways. 
right? Because that's where the sun comes okay. in, right? The sun produces energy, and that energy comes in and uh, strikes chemicals and chemicals do stuff. Water heats up, water cools down when they're facing away. You have all of this stuff happening that doesn't exactly follow the laws of thermodynamics locally. And by locally, I mean the entire planet. And so, yeah, you, you have different levels of energy. And, and the planet has uh, blocked energy at different points, depending on how much CO2 is in the air or not CO2, how much ash is in the air if a volcano, super volcano exploded. Um, this planet has different levels of oxygen at different times, which has caused uh, things like a, a single lightning strike to uh, cause a flash fire over, you know, thousands of acres, things like that. Um, and so, yeah, as a general rule, this is true, but only in an isolated system. And this planet is not isolated. So when you, you try and apply the law of thermodynamics to this planet, it doesn't work because it's not isolated. It's only isolated in, in the universe that we exist in. And that is only as far as we're able to determine so far, right? There are some, there are some physicists that look at white holes and say, yeah, somewhere there's a white hole that, that's bringing energy into the universe. And that would mean we are no longer isolated. Um, but that is still very hypothetical at this point because we haven't actually discovered one. Um, but th so there, there are some things we got to look at. But in general, I don't think you understand the laws of thermodynamics well enough to make to come to that conclusion. Well, I th that could very well be true. You know, uh, it's not like I have formal education on it. Um, but I would say, you know, you did mention how um, laws of thermodynamics kind of work a little bit differently. But I, I didn't hear necessarily anything that would invalidate the law of conservation of energy or, or to lead me to believe that, hey, this could be invalid in some instances. I'm not saying it's invalid. I'm, say, I'm saying that, that locally we don't follow it because we have energy input into the system we call Earth. The Earth is not isolated. I, I, I understand. I guess then, you know, it could be a semantic thing, but at least the way I understand the universe it is like an all-encompassing, like by definition, it is isolated. Because Yes, and, and, and I, I've, I've agreed with that. The universe is isolated, but within the universe, not everything mm -hmm. happens at the same rate. And so you so have I, this local I, star system. The sun was created by, uh, you know, matter coming together under the force mm -hmm. of gravity and, and coming into fusion, starting fusion, right? That's, that's a local system. And so all this stuff happens at different rates. So that's what you have to look at is you have to, to you can look at the entire universe and go, yeah, it, you know, in, in billions, trillions of years, whatever it's going to take, uh, according to, to several hypotheses, matter will keep expanding out until finally there is really no matter um, at some point. And that would be the law of thermodynamics happening. But today, mm -hmm. right now, for the last several billion years, uh, energy has that's been happening at different rates in different places and right now on earth we've got a lot of energy coming in so we just don't see that here on earth right so you, you, you've got like to adjust that. your 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 scale sometimes well well I understand the point you're making if I was talking about maybe the creation of, of the earth then I would understand why outside systems affecting the earth would kind of render that um, law of thermodynamics as invalid in this case. But I'm not necessarily understanding why we can't apply it to the universe as a whole. Well, so wh we when I have say... We reason to apply it to the universe yeah. as a whole. Well, when, when I say we do apply it to the universe as a whole and we do see it happening, what does that mean to you? <laughs> uh, so that, that means to me that like the law of nature states that energy can only convert forms. It, it can't be created nor destroyed. I agree with that, right. And so, so we're so, in agreement on that point, right? Yeah. We're in agreement that the law of thermodynamics apply to the universe as far as we're able to determine right now. We're in agreement so on I that. I, I take, yeah, we're in agreement about that. And then I guess I take it a step further by kind of saying, well, if that is the case, then that means it is not possible for nature to have created itself. So when that, you say nature has created itself, what are, you, what are you talking about creation of the universe? Yeah, just, just the creation of... 
Okay, so you know that the, the, the current leading theories that I'm aware of, or excuse me, hypothesis that I'm aware of, all start with the universe in some form of energy, that energy expanding, mm -hmm. cooling, and that's how we get matter. Mm -hmm. Right? So I don't know. So there's like energy that we start with, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. So the thing is, um, you know, we, we could say that energy has always been there. Yes. Or that energy. As far as we can tell, yes. Point. Yes, as far as we can uh, tell. The reason, yeah. Well, I, I don't believe we can accurately say that it has always been there because that would mean we have an infinitely regressing timeline, which I believe... In no. Uh, so just, to, yeah. just to clarify, the word, the word always. Mm -hmm. God, here we go with our semantics. It's necessary, I promise. When you say yeah. always, do you mean up until, like, the point that we call the Big Bang or the Planck time, which is as far back as we can serve? Or when you say always, do you mean that and whatever series of events created the universe? Just because the, those are two very different things because the part that's unclear is everything that created the universe because we can't at the present moment observe that back in time because there's mm -hmm. like a before time and space time is et cetera et cetera yes. and there's math i can't do because if you mean since then the con law of conservation mm -hmm. of mass and energy yeah but i don't know how you can take that uh observation in that law of science that applies to the normal events in space-time and say before space-time acted the way that we know this law in it would definitely also apply right. and that's the other thing i was going to bring up too is, is the concept of space-time most of the physicists that i'm aware of think that space and time are the same thing and they refer to it as space-time mm -hmm. so yeah. space and time came into existence at the same point for whatever if that even makes sense you know, of a uh, before there was time, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's part of the problem, I think, too, is that you're saying, you know, you, we there's only a certain point that we know, and that the the, the math mm -hmm. for us works, and then our understanding of that high energy level of physics starts to break down, and we don't currently have any way to test anything or to set up any kind of experiment because the energy levels are just way too high for us for our current level of technology. So you're right, we don't know, and science doesn't make any claims. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this is really like interesting stuff. Um, you know, I guess my claim would have to be made within the confines of space and time. I think outside of space and time, what I'm saying wouldn't even really rationally make any sense. Um, yeah, I agree. But I guess, um, you know, you did mention that space and time I don't know if you use the word start point, but you'd mentioned like it, it, it came into being at a certain point. Well, there's a space and time. Yeah, yeah space and time are, are are the same thing essentially. Yeah, so it's it, like four dimensions mm -hmm. of space time. It's sort yeah. of like in the same way that the the space part of space time we can observe uh, expanding. I mean, okay, this is the part where I go. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not a physicist, but it sort of seems like we're being stretched through that fourth dimension in a way that we mm -hmm. don't. Yeah, we call time. Because we're being stretched through it. Right. So, yeah, those two things. Yeah, it's all really, really fascinating to hear yeah. uh, physicists and theoretical physicists talk about mm. what we know and what we can know and what we don't know about the, the beginning, right? And this is, this is mm -hmm. where uh, most theists and most atheists are going to begin to disagree because most theists say we don't know, therefore God. And atheists just stop at we don't know. And optimists say, we don't way, know yet. <laughs> the way I would word it, you know, for myself would be that um, I, I know that, you know, I know that within, I know that what we observe around us cannot be explained by something within the confines of space and time. I know these bounds have to be broken, How? at least the way I understand things. How? How do you? Mm -hmm. How do you, how how would you go about demonstrating this? Um, well, I cannot I cannot demonstrate it, but okay. I can kind of make a negative claim, and that, of course, as I mentioned, that that negative claim would be based on the law of conservation of energy. Right, which um, we've already established. You you don't fully understand quite yet, and need to do some more study on. So, um, snap. I guess you feel that way. I, I don't. I don't think that's the case. Yeah. I don't. I don't 
you didn't, I didn't hear you say anything that I feel invalidates um, what I'm saying. You, you kind of mentioned uh, the universe. Uh, the, well, you kind of kind of went to the earth a few times, so I feel like there's a little mix up there. But then after that, you do mention some pretty um, interesting points um, regarding space and time, almost as though we are going from a state of timeless space to a state of spaceless time. That's almost what it sounded like. No, space and time are intricately li linked. So if you, it sounded like I was trying to separate those two concepts. I wasn't. They, they, They're the same concept. Um, no, no, I'm. I, I, yeah, and and that's kind of why it's almost like one has to go into the other, right? Because they well, cannot. It's a little bit no. like saying height and width, right? They're the same. Uh, they refer to different, literally dimensions of the same shape. So the you can say that the the width of a, a geometric shape is expanding, and the height is expanding, or they're expanding together, or that. So in the same way that you can say space and and time, space being those first three dimensions of our existent mm -hmm. universe, time just being the other one that we're, as we can perceive, being stretched through, or, or whatever phrase you want. So it's a, it's a little bit like um, the, the way that you're saying they're going to go into each other, or the, the beautiful chiasmus you've used of, you know, a spaceless time becoming a timeless space. I'm not sure how that applies, because mm -hmm. it's sort of like a widthless height becoming a heightless, heightless width. Say that ten times fast. Um, it's sort of like is a horizontal line stretching into a vertical line. It wouldn't really be even a different shape if you're moving it. I've been on a math kick lately, so I've got ge geometric shapes running over my eyes. But it, it's sort of, it's the same height. concept of, in the same way you'd say height and width are the same concept of space, time, and then the three dimensions of space are the same uh, elements of space-time. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I, I would say a little bit of that kind of went a little over my head. I'm curious. I mean, I, you know, you, you it goes me. over my head, too. I'm not, I'm not that good at math that I'm like, oh, here, let me write an entire... Yeah. My, my cousin, it, <laughs> it's one of these things if you see someone get the, like, uh, they get their master's, they get some other postgraduate thing that I've forgotten because I don't understand, and then they do, like, a doctorate in it, and you try and, like, oh, they, they give it to you to proofread and you understand like three of the words in the first five pages. And it's like, hey, does this sentence have a subject in it? And you go, oh yes, this <laughs> equation. And that represents, you know, the collective heat of all of the stars on the left or something. And then you keep going because, I don't know, although he works with how trees talk to each other. But yeah, the, okay. the math goes over and my head as well as the, the long and short of that ramble. Okay. And I'm pretty uh, tall. Let me ask, and, so, and I'm yeah. uh, so sorry if I'm getting a little repetitive here, but for what reason can we not apply that to the beginning of the universe as a whole if we do accept the universe as isolated? So it's the questions the other way around is conceptually, I can conceive of like, oh, okay, all of the matter and universe uh, that forms whatever space time, et cetera, that began at the Big Bang. I can imagine some type of negative before, like, I don't know, there's a central point and a rubber band bouncing back and forth across it, and at this point the rubber band is expanding, and this is us expanding in this direction, and then we get to a point of expansion and the world uh, crunches down into nothing, the big crunch, or it expands so far that it freezes because entropy overcomes the existence of energy and, and we freeze. But I don't have a good reason to apply this rule before. So I don't understand mm -hmm. what happened before, you know, the Planck time. Um, and I don't know mm -hmm. whether that mm -hmm. would follow any of the laws of what's happening afterwards, right? I don't know how seeds work. I'm just on a, the flower of a plant. Yeah, and that goes back to saying oh. we don't know. I mean, there's a certain amount of there's a certain yeah. amount of science we know. There's a certain amount of things we we do know about the earliest uh, uh, times of the universe, but there's a certain amount we don't know and we can't know because we just don't have the, the physics or the language to describe it. Yeah. So it seems like essentially maybe the the laws of physics as we know it, they, they're not necessarily applicable to that kind of point in time. 
Uh, well, we don't know how to apply them. Yeah. We don't know what yeah. they are. Uh, as you start getting into higher and higher energy physics, things start getting, I mean, you start getting into more and more quantum stuff and it gets weirder and weirder and we just don't have the math. We don't understand it. We don't have any way to even approach the amount of energy uh, that was mm -hmm. present at the time. So, I mean, you can go back and, and there's dozens of, of uh, uh, astrophysicists talking about this kind of thing and talking about what we knew and what we know and what we don't know about the beginnings of the universe, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the, the real point is that none of this requires a God. We can explain everything mm -hmm. through naturalistic methods as far as we mm -hmm. can. And again, this is where theists and, and atheists usually depart ways, is we say, we don't know. You agree that we don't know, but you add tack on, therefore God. Well, me personally, I tack on, um, I don't know, but I do know it, it was not natural. It's not natural means. Because yeah, like that's the exact same. Okay, so, so it's not natural. Yeah. So how did you, so here's kind of the problem. Are you familiar with the argument from mm -hmm. ignorance? Um, not exactly. Okay, because you just said it. I don't know, therefore it wasn't natural, is a conclusion based no, no, on no, no, no I, evidence. Yeah. And that is essentially uh, the argument from, from incredulity or the argument from ignorance. And it's a fallacy, no, it's, it's I, bad logic. Somebody committed murder. I, I don't know who. It must have been Steve. No, no, but what I'm saying is someone committed murder. I don't know who, but I can point to one person who I can prove it's not them, and I could say, I know it's not him. Who did it? I don't know, but I know it's not him. So the same way, I know it's not natural beginning. That It's not possible. Can the you explain how you eliminated nature, a the, natural beginning as the guilty part? Or part I'm going to let this analogy go because it's going to get really... Yeah. If I go, well, how, could, how it, do you know that it, nature isn't guilty of murdering uh, existence into existence? But that gets a little bit confusing. So how did you, how did you eliminate... Because uh, of nature... Yeah. Uh, because of nature's law, that, you know, that's why I think that. But of course you mentioned a planned time, which could give some sort of explanation to um, this stuff that but I'm saying, because I'm just the, the, there's applying no, laws as we understand. Yeah. There, there is no theory, there, excuse me, there is no hypothesis that I'm aware of regarding the early parts of the Big Bang that stipulate that there was no energy. So there is no, hypo there, there is no hypothesis that violates any of the laws of thermodynamics that I'm aware of for the early parts of the Big Bang. None. Okay. There, is yeah. no, there is no hypothesis for the early parts of the Big Bang that proposes something came from nothing. None. The only people mm -hmm. saying something comes from nothing are theists. I, I have not heard a hey. single scientist talking about a single hypothesis for that time talking about something from yeah. nothing. So anyway, we've got to let you go. We've been talking to you for a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, and sure, uh, it's been a good I conversation. Feel free to call back. All right, for sure. Thanks. Take mm -hmm. care. Bye. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I, you know, I wasn't sure how that conversation was going to go in terms yeah. of like getting uh, twisted into, you know, cosmology and science that I, you know, well, it's hard would need help to completing stuff we the homework understand. of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. It's sort it, of like, uh, well, yeah. 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 Uh,